you're gonna lay there. <laughs> boom! That's my Byron Boom. What's up, Protector Nation? It is Luke here, and I'm here today with my friend Tony. And the reason I brought Tony in here is, well, one, Tony's a cool guy, but more importantly, no offense, is he builds these crazy psychotic Jeeps. And this is one of my favorite builds of his. It's called Hatchet. It has a hatchet on the hood. So that was kind of how I met you. I was walking around an expo right. and I just was like, you have, a, you have an ax on your hood. And he, you were like, it's a hatchet. It's like, a hatchet. <laughs> like, oh, my bad, my bad. So Protector Nation, the reason I wanted to bring this to you guys today and sort of go over Tony's vehicle is, at least for me, I have found so many things from the car camping community, better known as overlanding. And it's, it's sort of a new world for me and I'm just slowly getting into it. But what I'm finding is I call guys like you and, and some of my other friends in it. And I just, I'm always like, Hey, I have this problem. How can I fix it? Is there right. something like I have this storage issue with my, you know, with my weapons or with equipment that I'm carrying. Um, I'm going surfing and I want to like, man, I wish I could have a por portable shower. And you're like, actually, you can have a heated you one. Have, <laughs> like, <yes>. so, <laughs> so I wanted to just go over hatchet. I'm not saying you guys need to build out a whole rig like this, or that's even something that you're interested in, but you might find some small ideas that you can then carry over into your own personal vehicles and whatnot. So that's why we're doing this video. I'm gonna do a lot more of these. If you guys like it, just tell Byron you wanna see more of it. And we're hoping maybe the Romer guys come and, and get sure. involved in that as well. So yeah, we can go over the parts and pieces. We're gonna give a general overview of it today. And if there's something you see on it you like, send us a message, maybe we'll cover that specific item. Yeah, for sure. So let's start off. What is Hatchet the Jack? Hatchet is a Jeep Gladiator pickup truck. Uh, the first model that they released as a pickup truck OEM. And uh, it solves some of the major problems that we've always had with Jeeps. I've always been a Jeep guy, so I've been willing to overlook some of those problems. But space, storage, you're not having to bed. In a, in a typical Wrangler, you have some cargo space. We throw a few backpacks in there, a dog, that's it. You're done, you're full. Um, this really solves a lot of that problem. So I think some of the drawbacks that you may hear online is the length, uh, you know, crossover angles, things like that. But for, I wanna say 99% of the people, this one's not gonna be a problem. If you need more clearance, you lift it higher, you over that, now you have a bunch of space to stack everything in. Yeah, and in regards to the Jeep Gladiator, um, from what I've at least seen, for a pickup truck, there's nothing else remotely close to it on the trail and in for an off-road space. Right. I mean, I know the Dodges do great and the Toyotas do great, but this thing's really in a whole nother out of, class. Out, out of the box, this is extremely capable. Yeah. Um, right off the dealership lot, uh, in varying levels you could purchase. You know, if you go to the Rubicon, you'll have the lockers and everything else and stronger axles. Um, but out of the box, this will by far exceed uh, probably anything out there that you can buy without having to put a dime into it outside of the dealership. Yeah, and I've seen these pull as well. Like I have a boat and that was always kind of one of my things. And then I see this guy pulling a 26 foot Mastercraft with, right. his, with his Gladiator. I was yeah. like, okay, I believe <laughs> like, they're rated that's for, cool. I believe they're rated for 7,000 pounds. And yeah, I might want to drive six, eight, 12 hours with 7,000 pounds, yeah. but you got to go across town with a rig and a trailer. I mean, you could do that. And, any of your camper trailers or anything like that shouldn't be a problem at all. Yeah, it's no problem. So let's get started here. The first thing I want to talk about is maybe my favorite thing about this build, the thing that like came out to me at first was this whole thing is rhino lined. It is. So there's no paint. It's all, well, I guess it's a paint, but yeah. it's all rhino lined. So tell me about that. And how did you guys come about? Like, first off, where'd the idea come from? Well, there's been some, obviously we're not the first ones to rhino line a vehicle. Um, but we started using this a few years ago on some of our builds. Um, they're working on a new finer texture. Typical bed liners are really rough, nothing you want your skin touching too much. Um, they're working on a finer texture which has what I call touchability. Um, and it really protects the body. It's, it's a commitment. I mean, you got to know you want it. You're going to be paying probably around very similar to what's going to cost for a color change on a car. Um, typical paint shop. Um, but you don't have to worry about tree scratches, pinstriping. We've had vehicles that have had pinstripes from bushes and cow here in Southern California, things yeah. like that with clearance issues and stuff. You're not gonna have to worry about this. They can do paint matching. This one is, um, I believe called crayon, which is a Porsche color um, that we decided to go with on this one. Um, it's kind of a grayish tan. You may not be able to see in this light, but, and uh, with it, with shot with the color OEM, single stage, and then cleared over top of that for the UV protection. 
Um, wow. But it's it's pretty bulletproof and it's going to be with the vehicle for the rest of the vehicle's life. Yeah, I was just speaking with my friend uh, Leland. If you're watching this, Leland, what's up? Uh, he's in Georgia and he's a hunter. And I went out and I killed my first deer with him. And I was like, man, how do we get this out of here? He's like, I'm just going to drive my truck back here. I was like, what? His truck is just pinstriped with, yeah. with from brush and everything else. But that's the way he's to him. It's like, this is how I use my vehicle. You know, I just now like 20 minutes ago told him about this and he's like, okay, how do I do that? Where do I get that from? <laughs> but, um, it's definitely, I mean, some people change their paint all the time. If it's in that same price range, it might be something you guys out there want to look at, or maybe you're restoring an older vehicle or something, something yeah. like that. Um, and again, if you want more information on any of this stuff, reach out to us and I'll put you in contact with Tony here. Uh, let's talk about, let's start from the front and move back. Okay. So what is this? This is a JCR bumper. Um, usually the first, second thing people probably tend to do on their vehicles is change the bumpers. Basically it's offering a decent amount of protection. Uh, you're going to end up bumping into anything. You're not really going to have to worry about the front end of the vehicle. Um, now, uh, steel versus recovery. aluminum. What are you, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, it's going to come down to obviously steel is much stronger, but if you're, it depends on your needs and your uses. Uh, if you're going to get some pretty heavy use, you want to stick with steel mm -hmm. uh, long term. But if you're looking for some decent protection, and the aluminum bumpers, though the bumper shell is generally all aluminum, there's going to be some steel reinforcement in that as well behind it. Yeah. Uh, especially if you're not going to be mounting a winch to a aluminum bumper without steel reinforcement and mounting points. Also, the recovery points are going to be also reinforced. Uh, but you're going to cut a ton of weight. You know, my seven-year-old kid could probably pick up the shell of an aluminum bumper. Oh, wow. That typically would be 70, 60 pounds okay. um, or more, depending on front and rear and the configuration of it. Yeah, this is uh, basic protection. This is protection, protecting the grill uh, as well as the winch. Uh, for this, I mean, if you're ramming into a wall with it, then that's kind of your own fault. But Or animals. Game. Game yeah. on the trail, game on the road. Yeah. Uh, I have... I lived a long time in Vermont, and that was a real thing on the trail, even just wheeling. You come around a corner and you have a moose standing in front of you, and depending on how fast you're coming around that corner, whether you saw it or not, this would at least save the front end to a point. <laughs> yeah. Um, and how fast you're going. You're on the trail, you're not going terribly fast, but you might bump it and piss it off, but yeah. Okay. All right, now, the winch. Why have a winch? Probably one of the, again, when I say this, I'm speaking of 95 percent of the people mm -hmm. probably the the least used but one of the most important pieces of kit on the vehicle the least used but most important okay for 95 percent of the people depending on your level of what you're planning on doing with it you go rock crawling things like that you're going to utilize it more of course yeah day-to-day -day driving ski trips trail trips hunting trips you know the idea when you're going hunting is not to tackle the hardest obstacle in front of you to get where you're going yeah. you're going to go around those things but you get stuck in the mud, you get stuck in the snow, one of your teammates gets stuck in the snow, this is what you're going to need to get you out uh, with minimal amount of sweat. So it's an important piece of kit. Um, this one's from Warren. It's the 12S, uh, 12,000 pound, S being for synthetic line. Uh, we like to use that, it's again, it's a weight cutting thing. You yeah. don't have to deal with the steel cable and we'll have no to much less recoil if there was a problem breakage. Yeah, uh, which is, I, I've cable. seen all the horror stories from yeah. that, I had a friend tell me that. I was like, oh, that's a thing? He's like, Google it. <laughs> like, look on yeah. YouTube. I'm like, oh. Yeah, catastrophic. Like, wow, that's really bad. <laughs> um, I I never thought I wanted a winch on my truck. It's my next purchase for sure. And I'm not a hardcore off-roader by any means, but I do get out on the trails. And more importantly, where I live, you know, for the majority of COVID, my family was up in the mountains the whole time. And just driving around up there in the snow, there's people knocked off on the, the side, side the road, yeah. man i'm like life would be so much easier if i just had a winch <laughs> and yeah. like i had to use this, you know my, i had my snatch strap and, and i borrowed your max tracks which helped you know quite a bit but nothing would have made it easier and then there were some recoveries i couldn't do it's like sorry you have to find somebody yeah. with a winch because it's on a hill it's snow and ice everywhere i was just like dang i wish i had a winch yeah. Um, and this one's and this one's even a little bit further and it's upfitted with factor 55's ultra hook which you guys can go online and read about that or hit us up in the message we can send you some links and maybe we'll put some links in the post yeah uh, for that but this is what they call their closed system winching 
where you're you're limiting the amount of break points where you have with typical hooks and things like that you have the gate that locks the line in this one you're using shackles um, it just really upfits it well and they have a really cool guide on their website that you can go and purchase uh, very cheaply uh, for winching and things like that you can learn everything you need to learn and from what i've seen at least in my friends in that community this is like this is something everybody has no matter what winch type they have i just kind of see hey bug off we have a malinois here who's, who's loving on us uh i see everybody with this yep you know or a version of the factor 55 it's just like something that everybody kind of tends to buy right so i've heard really great things about this and it's a really nice piece of eye candy at the front yeah that's true <laughs> now real quick what's the story of this like where did this come up so the hatchet and the name of the vehicle came from we originally built a few years ago a j20 uh 1974 long bed that we built and that one's called tomahawk and it has a tomahawk it's on my front. favorite <laughs> truck ever look it up if you guys need to yeah I, we hear about it from luke very often about when you bring a tomahawk when you bring a tomahawk yeah um so being that that is the earlier previous generation uh, we thought it'd be kind of neat to do this one as hatchet um, this hatchet was made by a uh, knife maker in San Diego, Half Face Blades. Oh, yeah. Um, retired team guy. Um, and we reached out to him and he was he was tickled to to whip this together for us. So that's awesome. front end, not very sharp. The back end, you don't want to be stuck on. So yeah. you just got to be careful on that. <laughs> um, and then moving up to the lights, we went with KC. Now for me, I grew up in East County, San Diego. KC was like, you weren't even cool unless yeah. you had KC's on your car. And my dad, had Casey's on his on his trucks in the 70s and 80s yeah. you know like he had of, like an old Mickey Thompson Dow like F150 and yep. the big old smiley face lights so for me when I when I met you I met you in the Casey booth yep. I was going in there because I'm like it was nostalgic like oh that my dad had this stuff but yep. then as I got to know them they really make some of the best lights out there yeah. from what I see yeah I mean the heritage behind the company the family behind the company um, they're having a resurgence now and they're really getting after it. And uh, we've really been blessed to be a part of that crew. They're really good people and stoked to, stoked to work with them. Yeah. Um, so for me, on the light side of things, I really noticed this again, coming down the mountain. I think I called you guys a couple times, <laughs> full whiteouts, yeah. massive fogs, like driving through and, you know, I, I put that fog light on there and it's just like, oh, like it, it, yeah. I feel safer. And I know on the off-road side, you know, you want more of those lights, but um, on just a standard driving side of things, how important is it to have those different driving lights, spot, the floods, the ditch lights, and those kind of things? Yeah, it's, it's, all, it's all based on application and what you're using. Mm -hmm. You know, trail riding, we like, as you can see, the ones on the A-pillar here, they're pointed forward now, but we'll have those pointed um, outward on mm -hmm. both sides and that'll give us a little more visibility that our headlights are hitting on the sides of the trail on the rig in the back we also have uh, rack lights that shoot out on both sides and those applications those are great obviously we're not using those on the road yeah um but in those applications is great uh with the amber colored lenses uh for the snow and for fog and coming down a mountain going around late at night and the weather's really bad you wish you had more light the more you can see the safer you're going to be yeah 100 percent. i my standard dodge package was just not yeah. enough and uh, I'll go through my truck soon for you guys just kind of some of the things I've done but the lights were maybe the biggest safety upgrade yeah. I made it was one I didn't have to talk my wife into yeah. she was just like oh yeah you should fix that in fact can you get something for my car too yeah. you know so um, and Jeep has done that a lot and that's a big change with this platform both the JL and JT models uh, they do still offer the halogen basic lights mm -hmm. but the LED upgrade on these vehicles is worth every penny I know even even my friends at KC, they do make aftermarket lights and a few other brands out there uh, that we worked with in the past. But and that was that was literally the first upgrade we'd always do because they were literally the worst lights I've ever had on an yeah. OEM purchase ever, ever. And when we change them to the LEDs, it just they're phenomenal. So if you're out shopping for one of these, get the upgrade. You'll thank yourself because the other ones are piss poor yeah. at best. So. We're on the side of the vehicle here, just scratching it up, yep, scratching the it rhino lining. It. Um, why would people upgrade their vehicles with a lift? Now, I will say this, in, at least in my application, I haven't needed a lift past my, I have a Dodge Rebel, past the Rebel package. Yep. 
But now, of course, I'm wanting a little bigger tires, a little yeah. more capabilities, but... There's and, an aesthetic involved in that, you know, as well as some real reasons. Yeah, and then, and per, hey, bugger off. <laughs> Sorry. Um, why get a lift, and is there something to look for when you're when you're shopping for a vehicle? Is there certain character, characteristics that you would want to look for to have a more capable vehicle? Shopping in the vehicle, uh, the sense of things you want OEM versus things you don't want OEM? Yeah. Um, I guess I can go on your experience. You know, your biggest challenge in finding a lift for your vehicle has, has been the air ride package. Yeah. You know, when you get into uh, especially OEM upgrades like that, you're potentially opening yourself up to pose more challenges with aftermarket if you wanted to modify that. Or paying for that upfit, just to have to go backwards and take it out in some cases. Yeah. Depending on installation. So that's one thing that I would look at. Um, again, what's your intended use? You can get into a JL. Uh, a lesser model than the Rubicon, you're going to have potentially lesser durable axles, uh, which is not a problem, you know, depending on what your idea of tires are, you know, if you're going to get into a lower one and you're going to jump into uh, 37 inch tires, 35 inch tires, you're, you're trying to push an envelope. So there's a domino effect there that we like to call the curse of contingencies. You know, the curse already, of contingencies. You do oh, one back. thing and there's about potentially 40 things behind it that need to be addressed or will be, become the new fail point. Mm -hmm. The upgrade of a weak point, what's the, what's the next weakest point? That'll be the thing that'll break next. So you want to kind of think about what you're doing and make sure you're making your purchase based on what your long-term kind of goals are. Do I need lockers? Do I not? Do I want to do that aftermarket? Do I just get it now off the bat and be done with it? Mm -hmm. You know, things like that. Okay. It's a long game. So for you, what lift did you put on this? And what tires and why? So we went with a metal cloak. We've worked with metal cloak for a long time. Uh, been very happy with their systems. Um, in this case, we use the metal cloak lift and the Falcon shock from Terraflex. Uh, we really like that shock. Um, and it just offered a lot of adjustability and things that we really like. So we decided to go with that. So we a little bit of mix and match on this because though we work with certain, certain companies and manufacturers, we also have a, a lot of voice as to what we choose to do. And they all are really good with that because they want to hear that feedback. You know, there's a, is there a reason why you did this with that and match this to that and not full package A to Z? Well, yeah, it's because, well, we like this in this area and we like that in that area. So we take that flexibility um, and that's what we went with on this one, the two, uh, two lifts. For the tires, we did the Nitto Trail Grappers on this one. And this is a 37 1250, which I think is an absolute phenomenal size. Um, I spent a lot of time living in New England and with snow, my old Jeeps always had the, the tractor tires on it. Tall and skinny, 33 950s I had on a TJ, oh, like dang, <laughs> yeah, pizza cutters. Yeah, but when you had to get to work up on the mountain and you're 40 minutes away, and they don't break out the plows until 6 a.m. and you're already on the road, 60 miles an hour, rooster tail slow, but snow behind me, and 17 inches unplowed freeway. <laughs> not, it just would not stop. And that was a four cylinder Jeep, and I had those. Little, so the skinny tires in those situations are great. Um, out here, you want a little more of a wider tire for traction on rocks and things but previously the 37s for a lot of companies were in the 1350 which is going to add weight it's mm -hmm. a lot of tire and in, in my opinion i thought it was too much as far as you know cross pollinating the terrain that you're, you're experiencing uh yeah over the seasons and you, you get snow we get snow out here in california too and and a lot yeah. of the western states you have to deal with snow exactly Exactly. So. And you're not dealing with a lot, but you'd also want a tire that's going to turn into a snowshoe when you're trying to go up the mountain passes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's what a wide tire would do. Um, so this size has been great. And that's kind of why we went with this size. And proportionally, it looks great. It doesn't hang out too much. It's just, it's, you know, for most people, the 1350 is a little much. Yeah. You air these down enough, you'll get plenty of traction and it's not going to be a worry. Again, because we're driving this daily. Yeah. Again, you got to look at where your priorities are and the percentages of where you're using the vehicle. All right. So speaking of protection, Protect your nation. Let's talk about protection on a vehicle. So you have all the options here on this one. We already went over the front bumper, but you have rock sliders. This is a metal barred fender. And then talk about that rear bumper as well. So just kind of go into like, you know, why protection, why people might want it on their vehicle. Yep. And then um, obviously some of the options you have on this one as well. Yep. Well, the fender flares, it's doing two things. It's giving you increased uh, wheel clearance. Uh, which you can get in anything plastic. You can even get by trimming. Um, 
your stock fenders to get more wheel clearance. Uh, so these are providing more wheel clearance, but more importantly, they're providing protection on the side, as we previously mentioned. So these are structural. These are gonna be tied into the body pretty tightly and into the chassis as well, and they'll take a be beating. Uh, past builds, we've used all types of fenders. We, we are particularly fond, if you've looked through our catalog of builds that we've done, are the metal cloaks. And for me personally, on my personal vehicles, I tended to use metal cloaks quite a bit. And for me, after looking at a few, the deciding factor was one of one of our buddies flopped his Jeep on the side and the fenders literally kept the Jeep off the ground. Uh, all he had for damage was some powder coat damage. And I think he smashed one of his eight pillar lights, but the body was perfect. It literally kept the vehicle off the ground. So they're structural. You can stand on them, beat the crap out of them. This is a nice, nice, nice feature. And talk about what sliders are these? These are the JCR sliders, protecting a very vulnerable part of the vehicle. Uh, you drive over a rock very quickly, you're gonna damage that rocker panel and it's not a cheap fix. So very important feature. This one's also doing a step function as well. So day to day, it's a great option. Even if you're not hitting the rocks all the time, you're hitting the rocks once or twice a year, it's cheap insurance um, and sacrificial metal. Now let's move on to your rack. The Lightner, is that, did I say that correctly? You did say The Lightner rack. Lightner rack. So tell me about that. What made you go with that? <laughs> well, I know I love it. I, yeah. The first time I saw it uh, at the Overland Expo, I was like, oh, that's really well done. Yep. It just seemed to make things cool. And then for me and for you gun folk out there, this is, uh, this is awesome. This is an awesome option. So Lightner, is actually from our area. So I didn't even have a vehicle when I first saw this system. I, well, I had a vehicle, I had a Jeep, not a pickup truck bed. Yeah. And I saw him driving around town and I was like, what is that? And I need it. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we need to do a truck because right. I want this rack. I need a truck because I need to have that rack yeah. because of how functional it was. And immediately I was seeing the benefits um, as far as kitting vehicles out, day-to-day -day use, um, surfing, paddle boarding, uh, snowboarding, anything, you know, lumber from the store, it just served a lot of purposes. And the more I learned about it, the more I needed to have it. Yeah. Um, this is his forge system, extraordinarily strong. You never have to worry about this thing. You'll break the bed off the truck before anything happens with that rack. Um, and we can start going into a little bit of the features on that and things that I like about it. The one thing that stands out the most and a lot of people will have potential complaints about when you're going into a bed rack system are the load bars and it decreasing the ability for vertical storage whether that be uh, blinds, if you have set up mm -hmm. already, one piece that aren't assembled at that point, and right back to the domestic side, refrigerators, appliances, yeah. you know, crap like that that you're picking up you know, on the honey-do list on the weekends. These load bars have a quick release and they're all in a channel and they can all slide forward. So you yeah. can stack them all forward, you can get your motorcycle in the back, or your bicycles in the back and not have clearance issues with the, uh, with the bars. That's what I saw the first time he had a motorcycle mm -hmm. in the back of it. And I was like, wait, what? Like, that yeah. doesn't... And I welded my own rack, as you guys will see on my truck one of these days. And I was like, oh man, that's a good idea. I should have stole that from him. Because <laughs> right. that was... Because now I am limited to that, you know. Um, and it, I and can't it, put those things. And he designs... This, and everything's extruded aluminum um, and channeled for... I mean, it's a tinker toy in all senses of the matter. And he makes a lot of accessories that you mount on it. You'll see the low bars you can add. Generally, the kit will come with two. You can add a third if you need, or a fourth if you need. If you have a long bed truck, mm -hmm. full size truck, you can get as many. You'll hold your tent, it'll hold everything you need up there. Um, storage box. He makes the storage boxes in two different configurations. There's a short box, which was the first generation box that he had, and now he's making this long box. These are great for everyday items, stuff you want to keep dry. Uh, we keep our recovery gear in here. When we go camping, we're keeping our kitchen gear in here. Day to day, you can throw the kids softball bags in there, golf bags if you're into that sort of thing. Rifles um, if you're into that sort of thing. That sort of thing. Like my fam. <laughs> right. And you can have lockable and weather weather tight uh, storage, which is super important. I mean, I talked about earlier about the Jeeps and storage and this one being having a bed, there's a ton more storage on it, but there's definitely things you can do to increase that. And this is one of them. Definitely a must have in my book when I saw that they're making the longer ones. Yeah. Let's look at the other options on the other side. I want to show them that real quick. For sure. So this is one of the cooler sides of your vehicle and you guys know how we are about first aid. Um, you've got the outer limit first aid strapped on here. Yep. It looks like you could with, put a shovel or something yeah, there. With the quick release. This is a really nice kit. 
Oh, what? To make magnetic, one pull, you're in, out, and grab it. Uh, we fortunately or unfortunately had to um, use this once already and uh, happen to be the closest vehicle to a wreck and very quickly for anyone to grab it. I have one at home set up um, right outside my office in my garage and I made sure that uh, my kids knew how to release it in case I couldn't get to it um, in time. So I have them, I actually added an additional tether to that with a T handle so they can get their little hands around it better nice. and just kind of lean into it. And uh, all I had to tell them was just be careful because it'll come off that wall pretty quick and <laughs> bop you in the head, but they can grab it and pull it down. So it's, it's a great kit. Um, fire extinguisher. This is something I think a lot of people look past mm -hmm. and it's like one of the very first, like my wife drives a, my wife drives a, just a Range Rover. And uh, one of the things I put in her car was a fire extinguisher. She's like, why is that in there? I'm not doing anything. I was like, just, you're going to have this in here. Right. And, uh, and yeah, simple it, piece of kit. And the cool thing, as we were mentioning the Lightner, these are all mounts made by him. Uh, and this is a universal mount. There's any number of things you can mount to this besides the kit. Um, as Luke mentioned, we have, you know, the grips for the shovel mounts or whatever else you want to add. Uh, and this one is literally, it's the same mount, but in this case, utilized for a water and fuel. That's so cool. I've always like this. <laughs> and I love that it's locked. Mine is like jerry can strapped to the back of my right. truck. I put like right. a cable through it so they don't. Fortunately in the world, as we all know, there's sticky fingers. Yeah. And then you've got the little lights up here. Yep. This is a thing. This, this is, is a cool. thing. These are great, especially if you want to throw some some light down, down range um, on the sides of vehicles when going down the trail. It's kind of cool too, because you get to see some game when you're cruising around. Mm -hmm. uh, you can spot it easier and uh, it definitely heaves some light. That's awesome. Let's move to the back and talk about the rear end of this car. Yep. All right. In case anybody forgets the name of the car. There it is. Catch it. <laughs> um, talk about this rear bumper real quick. This thing's one of my favorite pieces on this Jeep is this bumper. Yep. Um, I, through my own research, I found out you can get these with the backup sensors, full OEM. It's like having an OEM yep. bumper, but it's built like a brick house. Yep. And I love the option for these big, huge reverse lights. Yep. That for me is, like I always wish my backup lights were brighter. Right, right. Well, we've talked about protection and steel versus aluminum in a lot of cases. And even if I do a vehicle that is all in aluminum for weight savings, I generally will go to the steel, steel rear bumper on this. And mostly that's for everybody else on the road. More cases than not, I'm not planning on rear ending anyone. I feel like a pretty conscious driver. Um, but there's a lot of people out there aren't paying attention and this is very cheap insurance because I've seen several Jeeps that have been hit that completely totaled Honda Accords, it's completely caved in with just some powder coat issues left on the bumper. So this is a good option to go with st uh, steel on this one. And this bumper here is made by Expedition One. They do a really, really fine product as well. This one's super strong. As Luke mentioned, it has accommodations for rear sensors if your vehicle has that. It has the recovery points on it. It also has a place for the OEM trailer harness and wiring. That's awesome. Yep. And this one- Most of the bumpers I've seen, they, they kind of end up just jerry. It's like an afterthought. Yep. They jerry it. And for somebody who tows a lot, exactly. like I'm always like, dude, like, why'd you mess that up? And this one we could probably get a close up on to show a few things, but this one also has lights built in for the license plate nice. to illuminate it. So you can easily do some LED or some small LED rounds in there to illuminate the license plate. The other option that these guys offer is a swing out carrier, which at the time we got this bumper wasn't available. So that was a challenge with this build. A lot of things weren't available for it when we first got our hands on it. Yeah. But the swing out carrier and their system for swing outs is amazing. So for any vehicle or any truck, uh, FJ, anything like that, go to their website, check out the swing out carrier because I completely nerded out on that when I saw it. It's What's really the cool. website? Do you know offhand? Uh, Expedition One. <laughs> Expedition One. Yep. Okay. Um, um, this one also, which we may be able to show you, is that the bumper also wraps around the rear the rear quarter to do some side protection as well, because on the trucks, you have a little bit more bed than you're used to on a Jeep hanging behind the uh, rear tires that's kind of exposed to potential damage on the trail. This one wraps around and provides that protection and coverage back there. And I love these recovery points from pulling many people yep. out. This would be so nice. It's like, oh, pull there. Cool. Yeah. Can't uh, have enough of those. <laughs> yeah, these are great. Yeah. All right, now, my favorite thing, let's move into the decked system here. 
I've known about this company for quite some time. They don't make it for my truck yet. <laughs> it's like, ugh. but um, man, this, this company is amazing. They're really offering such a great product, stronger than a much more expensive option, in my opinion, from what I've seen. And at, at a price that is just on a whole nother price point that was never there. It's like it never existed. You know, it, 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 uh, it's just really such a and, great And system. made in the US. Yeah, and made in the USA, which is like 100% half and half, uh, at least for me. Yeah, this uh, is one of my must haves on a truck. And we've had several trucks and I've always got this system. I, and depending on the truck, um, you can see it doesn't take up a terrible amount of room as far as vertical storage. If you carry a lot of vertical stuffs, maybe it's not the kit for you, but for me, it's not an issue. The deck is rated at 2,100 pounds. Each drawer is rated at 200 pounds uh, for storage. So you're gaining a ton of storage on this system. Can't say enough. Good and I see, I think it's like in their, in their promo deal, they've got like in this rack, <laughs> they had like a quad yep. pulled up on top of this. Yep. And then the guy was tying down to the rack and I'm like, Oh, that makes yeah. uh, lots of sense. You're going to exceed the load capacity of the truck before you exceed the load capacity of the system. Yeah, this is uh, drawers super super smooth. Right open, they lock open. Oh, um, they I have, didn't. That's awesome. They are um, dividers. There's boxes. I actually thought I had a D box in here for storage, but what I I don't. What I do have lock shut is their new soft bag, which is all the good things about the D box um for storage except you could bring this one with this bag which i'll go into more details on a uh, video just about the bag and some of the upgrades they did in this versus the d-box but tool rolls uh compressible bags inside satchel carry backpack carry with the straps briefcase carry this is very cool and you can take your tools that go the d-boxes are great if you're working on site but if you had to carry them anywhere over any distance it, they're not terribly fun to carry this solves all that and this is the new product for them and it also much like their d-boxes this one also nests into their into their drawers so all the drawers are built for all their boxes on um, whether it's a full size or small size box to nest inside the drawer to keep it from sliding around that's probably the coolest thing about their system is the accessories I mean, it's it's a fantastic product. Period. Storage pockets, but all these thing. little things, and uh, you know, you guys know Mike Pannone. He has this whole new system in his truck, and you know, he's a trainer. He's on the road a lot. He drives a lot, and he's absolutely in love with this. Just for being able to organize, you know, his his equipment, his gear that he needs at the range, and uh, you know, putting rifles in here, and everything else. You can lock it overnight. You know, it's it's good to go. Like they have to break the tailgate and then break into yeah. the lock here just to, you know, yeah. just to get to the product. So it's, it's a really secure system for for weapons. Yeah, 100%. and upgradable. I mean, you could do load load rails. Uh, you can see the drill points. They have indents in there for drill points. So you could put a locking rail down there for more tie down options. This, this vehicle we opted not to just because we wanted to be able to slide surfboards and gear in here without worrying about the rail coming in contact with our precious surfboards. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, they do have those and those are also great for tie down points for motorcycles or something like that where you can tie it right down. Steel reinforced system. I mean, it's, you're not gonna break it. Uh, what is, can you talk about real quick this system right here? Yes, so what we have here is this is a, just a power port by Dometic that we added. We wanted to be able to have both USB connections and a power port back here. What we'll do is when we have our our Snowmaster fridges in the back, we'll be able to plug right into here and keep that fridge charged and charged and keep all of our food cold and drinks and, and whatnot. Kids ice cream. Perfect. Like oh, ice cream. Uh, we also have an onboard compressor by Bayer, which is under the bed. And we'll have to get in that on another one when I feel like crawling under a vehicle and showing you a few things. But we have that in a uh, two gallon tank jammed up in the rear fender well. Oh, so there. you can, so you have a tank on there, so you can run power tools, you yes. can run, or not yep. power, but air tools air and tools. everything. Yep. That's and it also, it also cool. powers our horn blaster horn. Ah, which, which we're going to show right now. <laughs> or sorry onboard air is something that i learned about recently yep. kind of from that uh overland slash car camping community uh how i always knew as a kid how important it was to air down 
but we would always have to like strategically prepare like okay there's a gas station here and now we're going to sit there for you know 30 minutes filling our tires back up the onboard air options out there you guys look into from the uh, tires this size closer to an hour yeah depending on how far you air down yeah uh you know, Viair, ARB has a good compressor, and then there's also tanks available too from Power Tank. Yeah. And um, so get out there, look into those options, guys. It's, it's, an, it's a really nice piece of kit to have on board air. I mean, even, again, I always kind of go back to the domestic side of it, but that's, I mean, that's when the vehicles are getting used most of the time. So, yes. you know, having the air, it's like kids' toys, things like that. Um, the tires are nice, you know, the wife gets a flat yeah. or a low, low tire, you're not having to drive it to the to the uh, gas station to get it fixed up. You can take care of the right spot. Yeah, like my current one is a little black and decker yep. <laughs> that I just plug into my car because right. it's what I can have in there right now. I really want to do a, a compressor. I showed you where I wanted yeah. to mount it in my truck eventually, but um, little things like when we were at the lake, like we need to blow up this inflatable. I'm like, I got you and I can just do it. Um, the, well now, uh, I mean, a lot of people who are at least in, in the water sports, uh you have inflatable paddle boards yeah inflatable kayaks inflatable sit on tops and you don't realize how much you use it until you have it and you're like yeah. oh i can do this yeah um the kicker for me was the power tools yep. you know being able to just instead of you see my in my truck i carry a bunch of power tools on me uh battery powered it's like oh if i could have air air powered tools that would yeah. be just on a whole nother level yep. you know so that's why i want to even if you use electric power tools and battery packs it's a backup yeah you know yeah it's always good to have the air on board 100 percent. and this one we just plumbed to the rear because this is where it's getting most used and in this case specifically we also have an onboard shower by road shower oh talk about the shower <laughs> so the shower is super nice for obvious reasons but even rinsing off gear you're, you're coming out of the field on a hunt blood on your hands mud on your boots Yes. Yes, you could throw it back here and not really worry about it, but if you can give it a quick squirt and hose it down. Why well, for it? surfing, for me, and then and I- By the time you get home after a long day, the last thing you wanna do is, is get all your gear out and clean it. If you yeah. can do it on the trail while you're still in that mode, it's banged out and it's done. So what we've done here is we've had, we plumbed the airline or one of the airlines to the rear here. We have another section of hose that can go and then pressurize the road shower for us. Oh, so it's like pressurized yeah. water. Yeah. Oh, it's like that. So you can either pressurize it, you know, when you fill it off the line, um, or you can obviously hook it up to a compressor and have constant pressure. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah, I I had one of like the, I have always bought those like cheaper ones, you like pump, they never work. It's like, I'm like, I'm gonna get this. So when I'm done surfing or I do a lot of diving, I'm, just nothing like just being able to rinse yeah. off before you get back in your car, but and they believe, never work. Yeah, and this one I believe is seven gallons seven on this one, if I remember awesome. right. So, for us, I mean, it does take a decent amount of room depending on your vehicle, but for us, we have some wasted space under the storage box, which we definitely want to have on board because we use, use it a lot. And it actually fits right in there and it actually fits in perfect into the Jeep bed in this location. So with the deck and everything, it's so <laughs> you compressed could, up and tight. They couldn't have made it any better to work out, so. That's awesome. All right. All right, guys, now we're gonna talk about and just kind of go over a few things that you should always have in your vehicle, no matter what whether you're in a Ferrari or a build like this beast right here. Uh, I think we might have a few of those things anyway. On yeah, the list. yeah. <laughs> um, we already talked about medical. That's just so important. Yeah. You should just have it on you. You should have it in there. Um, second, a good roadside emergency kit is something that I've used a lot. And if you can buy extra flares, because I've had to use those flares and I always wanted more. Two was never enough. Let's put it that way. I wish I could have put out like 15 at the time um, with like your jumper cables, um, a fix a flat type thing has always has always tire kit, yep. found work for me, like a good tire kit. But um, some more options out there for you guys is one of my favorite upgrades, which we had in here. If I learn how to open this thing, ah, there we go. Is these guys right here. These are called Max tracks. These are the Max tracks extremes, which basically means that these little nubs are metal. Now, I can tell you this: don't buy a version of another version of this from any other company except this one, Max tracks, because I've seen the other ones break. This is not broke. I've used this 
these ones specifically one. that you loaned me when it was, I was like, yo man, it's snowing. I need to borrow something because I hadn't purchased these yet. But um, they saved, not me, but a whole bunch of other people, yep. a lot of hardship. And it was very easy to just walk up, throw this under a tire, yep. and and that person just pulled a car right out of that, that little snow ditch that they were stuck in. Yep. So uh, a lot of times it's just about traction. It's not that you're down six feet into a ditch, a vertical ditch, but a lot of times you just don't have the traction. You're a little, you're in a little hole, mm -hmm. fixed, done. I think I've seen so many big problems that could the whole time I'm like, this could be solved if we just had a set of max tracks. Yep. Um, so and this is more, this, I mean, we use these for a lot. You've obviously used them on the road for other people. Mm -hmm. um, we use these for a lot of different reasons. They're all nestable. So you can stack them as high as you want. And we use them to, to level out the vehicles and level out our camp trailers um, as well once we're posted up to camp. So they, they, they come in use quite this well. This is how they, they stack yeah. into each other just like this. And you can, also, you can also link them together as well. So if you're trying to build yourself a little road out of whatever you got yourself into. Say oh, you, I didn't know that. Say, say if you, uh, That's cool. you know, in New England, logging roads, which I'm sure you have logging roads in the Pacific uh, Northwest. Um, but sometimes it looks like solid ground, but because they uh, disrupted the uh, trees and things like that, you can find yourself pretty deep pretty quickly. Uh, so these these pay off time and time again. And they do come in numerous colors, if that's your thing. Yeah, um, they got all the different colors and the, you know. You also make a mini version as well. Yeah, now, do you like the mini version? Have you messed with I them I personally much? have not messed with the mini version, but I could see how, I mean, those linking those together with the bridges that they have, uh, you can easily build yourself a little trail out. And, and if you're in like a smaller room. car, like a like a maybe a Subaru Outback yeah. type vehicle, for storage and things like that, yeah, yeah, for sure. Because these are these are sizable, and here we have we have they can fit in the deck drawers, they can fit in the box, and of course, like Lightner, it mounts galore. You can yeah. mount those to the sides of the vehicle. And I uh, when I had these, I just was. <laughs> I was using them so much, I just stayed in the back of my pickup, right yeah. next to the snow shovel. Like these and the yeah. snow shovel, and that was like my recovery set. Unless, yeah, unless we are going somewhere that we have a lot of other gear to take and we absolutely won't need them, then maybe they'll get left behind if it's a space issue, but they generally live on the truck all the time. Yeah, that's awesome. So here we are, the inside of the beast here. Look at this the, leather. The cockpit, as we like to call it. Look at this leather. Mm, 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 mm. Um, so, I wanted you to kind of talk about your communication system here real quick because this is another thing from the car camping overland community that I've taken away and started using my own <laughs> stuff. Uh, and on my boat, actually, I use some yeah. of these stuff. Yep. So the first thing uh, in the vehicles, as you have with a lot of modern vehicles, is you don't want to drill into the dash to mount things. There's a hard time finding where you're going to put your phones, where you're going to put your, uh, your comms um, and everything else. Uh, Vector Off-Road makes this kit for the Jeeps for several generations of Jeep. Uh, it gives you numerous mounting options. Uh, so you can get all your gear, all your tech mounted up where it's in line of sight and you're not taking your eyes off the road. With this one, we utilize Ram mounts. We've been working with Ram mount a lot. Uh, they may, I mean, <laughs> if there's a negative thing to say about Ram mounts is that they have too much cool stuff. You'll, you'll probably get lost on their website, but you, again, a tinker toy thing where you can get in and build your solution, whether it's a laptop solution or a tablet solution or a charging station um, as well. We use these um, X-Grips, which I personally can say that I've been tested up to 60 miles an hour. I got T-boned um, when someone blew through a red light in a vehicle and I had my phone mounted in this X-Grip. And when the dust settled from the airbags, my phone was exactly where I placed it. From that moment on, and that was before we even worked with Ram Mount, and that moment on, that's all I'll buy for my phone mounts because I know no matter what happens, my phone's gonna be secure and locked into this location. These are all spring-loaded, so they'll work for a various amount of phones and, uh, and more importantly, various amount of different size cases. Uh, so you can just pop that open, put that in, and lock it in. They do have a one-hand uh, different version of a locking mount for phones uh, that you wanna check out as well. That one you can just drop in and push. This one needs a little bit of a two hand situation, but it grips and it's not coming out. All right, so you have all this electronics and everything. How do you control it? Do you just have 100,000 switches? Uh, best thing we've been using, you know, the old days, speaking of the old KC days with lights and accessories in the 70s and 80s, yep. we all did it, whether you want to admit it or not, everyone's always tapped into a cigarette lighter lead. 
or some sort of power lead behind a dash to light up everything. You have a hodgepodge of wires and spaghetti and things like that. Well, those days are gone, especially with modern vehicles and the CAN bus systems that they're running. You can't just tap into a power lead and have it run. The vehicle is going to sense that you're drawing too much on that line and it's going to shut down. So what we went with the solution is a switch pro system. Now these switches, you can set them up to uh, work with any accessories and they tie into a brain under the hood. What that kind of does is allow you to take any of your accessories, run it to that brain in the hood, and that connection point on that brain will correspond to these switches. They have a couple different layouts. You can have a bigger panel or you can run dual panels, which we do in some vehicles if you have a lot of switches. Here you can see we have the roof lights, the A-pillar, the horn, air, front and rear lockers, and rack lights, and then the underglow for the uh, rock lights. So it makes it, it's also a really good accessory to get when you first buy the vehicle. Um, it's not maybe the sexiest, it's not anything anyone's gonna see going down the road, but it's gonna make your life a million times easier and far less chance of you burning your vehicle to the ground when you start monkeying around behind wires because most of us aren't electricians and shouldn't be dabbling with that anyway. So take it easy on yourself, get this system, all your accessories will be very easy to set up.